So then we are back with the more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Services where we find in the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzayelic lineage. So then we can understand the time of the end as per Yerushiahu the prophet. We find a layer of understanding of the spring feast, the autumn feast, and also the returning of the cities of the Messiah laid waste for many centuries. So then, as we study these holy documents from the Tzayelic lineage, from the second son of Ibrahim, very importantly, the Messiah then he gave the understanding and he came and he completed the spring feast found in Leviticus 23rd chapter from the first verse through the 21st verse. Thus, then, the autumn feast is from the 23rd third verse through the 44th. Thus we are awaiting simply for the autumn feast. As far as this revelation, in order for you to understand revelation you must be a revealed person. The Messiah came and he revealed then the autumn feast. He did not complete the autumn feast but he revealed it. So then, what can we understand of this day? United States is trying again of recuperating its industry, but we can understand very plainly. Even Volkswagen is trying to open up a factory in Detroit and it's not going to work. We must be absolutely clear what then Daniel the prophet has mentioned because he is specific. He was very specific. He mentioned of the new system. He said at the end of the thousand years without the holy cities, the thousand years of deceit, at the end of it, knowledge would increase for the purposes of trade. Daniel the prophet was a tradesperson. He was not a regular prophet. Though he did understand tabernacling. No questions regarding this topic. However, he was not a person intended for tabernacling only. He worked under many kings and he was responsible for bringing trade so then the kingdom was furthering itself because of the presence of the Creator in the life of Daniel the prophet. So then, what can we understand of the Messiah himself when he came and he completed the spring feast? The world is always a scoundrel by nature. Without the holy cities, the world is a scoundrel. Let's then understand why. The Messiah himself was the living tabernacling. He was the living Messiah. He was the person of whom the Moshe, the prophet, then told his people, when he comes, make sure, be very cautious and be very Incline, listen to him. So then, let's try understand what the Messiah did so then we can further ourselves so we can come out of a scoundrel of a world and then becoming part of the family of the Messiah because he expects every person engaged in the combat as far as what Shaliak Shaul has done, so must we do. And then the Messiah is obviously the model or the role model. So then, what can we understand of the spring feast? Firstly then, let's speak of the prophets. What were then the objectives of the prophets? Pointing the people back to the instructions. What can we understand of the people of the Messiah versus Gentiles? Gentiles are the testifiers on behalf of the Messiah. Those of the lineage of the Messiah that came from Ibrahim, those people, some of them are coming back to service. They are going to set up tabernacling and the first tabernacling is going to be at the land of Cush where exactly then Yohanan the prophet wrote Revelation or Galah. That's why then he was there. Because he was far away from the Holy Land in Asia Minor because there was a huge persecution. 
and then Yohanan ended up in northern Africa where he was able to gather the documents of the time and he organized the first city and then he was there for some roughly 36 months until he had the entire understanding of the next roughly a thousand years ahead of him up to 1009 or 6009 but there is more the Mishia then not only this but then the Mishia separated his prophecies in first second and third portions the first portion as we understand was the spring feast then you have the autumn feast then you have post autumn feast let's try understand how can we come to this conclusion because Yerushiah the prophet in 65th and 66th verse plus Ezekiel from the 40th and beyond spoke of the new earth. The new earth obviously is post autumn feast. You have to understand very plainly. So then the Messiah, let's evaluate what he did. Firstly, he did precisely what the prophets told him to do. The Messiah did not ask for their uh, he did not ask them for their favor but the Messiah himself he did what his father told him to do however he was not doing what he wanted to do let's try explain this a bit more because when we read what we have thus far as the spring feast there is a mixture of the spring feast, autumn feast and post autumn feast. Let's try to understand how this works. The 24th chapter of Mitzchiah does not belong with the spring feast. Let's try to understand this factor. The prophecies and the prophets they are ex explicitly, they are exactly and those prophecies are perfect. These then we can only understand the prophecies as we respect their timing. The Messiah would never speak of the autumn feast and then the time of the end prior of the completion of the spring feast. Let's try understand why. Because there is a sequence the Messiah he had to make himself available as the salvation plan for the Gentiles and his own people. If the Messiah was speaking a lot of the future, they would not have the interest of having himself as their savior. Let's try understanding these in place in another perspective. Medjiyah the 24th chapter does not belong with the spring feast. First the Messiah was placed on a pole. Then during the 40 days of his ministry after he came from the dead, after he came out of the inferno, he was 72 hours in the heart of the earth, meaning the inferno. He was there, he experienced it. And when he came back, what he said wasn't very nice. He described the inferno and how it was down there. And each of those persons not understanding tabernacling would end up where he was at. And they were very angry at him. That's why Yahanan ended up in northern Sudan because it was the land of Cush. Very far away from Asia and the Holy Land. When the Messiah then, he came from the dead during the 40 days of ministry prior of his ascension. Then he spoke of the 24th chapter of Mechichiahu. So then, he was in the temple. He was there doing his tabernacling. But it was during his 40 days after he came from the dead. Because the Messiah couldn't have under any condition explain the future without earning he earned the position of explaining the future so then the four recordings of the 
spring feast, as we understand as a spring feast, there are sections of those places where the Messiah spoke after he came from the dead. He was 40 days in the earth ministering to his people. He was not during the time of the 490 days ministry as he came to complete the spring feast itself. He was 40 extra days only explaining the future. So then the scripture becomes absolutely perfect. We understand the spring feast, we understand then the prophets, we understand timing, we understand the Messiah experienced the inferno, he came back, then he explained the future. It was never before. Because if the Messiah had revealed the future prior of his earning of a title of salvation or savior, then the people would not have any interest. So the Messiah used their lack of understanding as a means of having Him as their Savior. So then, He completed the Spring Feast and any future reference where the Messiah spoke, when the Messiah spoke the references of the future, it was during the 40 days after he came from the dead. So then the people, they did not ask him any questions of the future during the spring feast. It wasn't the time for the Messiah who revealed those areas. No person asking him any questions regarding the future. He only answered those areas related with the completion of the spring feast. It was to give himself over so then the anointing of the seat of the holy mercy seat was then completed then the Messiah then paid the price. When he came from the dead then he spoke of the future. Make no mistake, because this was the way the Messiah related the events, the flow of events of spring feast and future. Thus, when he ascended, he gave the entire knowledge of the holy instructions, including the future. And there is more. The Mount of Transfiguration. It was after his ascension. We understand these as part of it if you understand then revelation. Let's try to understand why. Because a portion of it is in the future. That's why we understand as tabernacle, because tabernacle has no time. When we understand as the Messiah then came from the dead then he walked on the earth for 40 days. Then he went up on the mountain. Because there then he met. Then those who were of the law. He met the law himself, the creator, and Moses. It was representative of the law. And then Eliyahu, the prophets. So then, it was during the time of the Sukkah, the Feast of Sukkah. But this was done after. We have to try to understand these situation for what they are. We have to study timing. The timing when the Messiah then he rose. And during the time where he was then those 40 days of ministry because he couldn't have revealed the future prior of his death so you must make sure we understand this point because when the Messiah he went up the mountain as we understand he gave the Samaritans two days 
2,000 years. And as we study more the holy instructions, then we understand those events where then timing they get changed a bit. However, the content and context they do not change. I spoke myself before many times prior Mishia went to the pole, he spent time with the Samaritans, as it was chronological speaking. However, when he went up to the mountain, he revealed himself, he transfigurated himself, and then he opened the seven seals. Those are related with the future. It was after he came from the dead. However, this does not change the events of the future, do they? No, simply understanding, the understanding becomes clearer as we understand the spring feast only by itself first. No person asked him any questions regarding the future yet. Then the Messiah went to the pole and he was then named Savior. He went to the inferno, he was there 72 hours, came back, and he came back speaking many words of the future. So the combination of what he saw for 72 hours, plus the opening of the understanding of the future events, then he gave a couple of days for the Samaritans, two Yom creation days, then he ascended. Thus then, a hundred years later roughly, then came a huge persecution. So much that we have roughly 10% of what the Messiah has spoken. Because whatsoever they could find of writing in people, they got rid of them. Because the Messiah was speaking the truth. Then Yahanan, obviously he went to northern Sudan, today northern Sudan, or then the land of Kush. Then there he organized it. Yet, later when the cities were destroyed, a lot of those documents were destroyed. We have only fragments today. But because we understand of the holy instructions as perfect, First comes the Spring Feast in its contents only related with the Messiah as completing the objective of a Savior. No future involved. Because Moshe said when he comes, listen to him. Because he came to save them. As a ransom from many. So he did. He did not mix future with the time he was then involved with the spring feast and giving himself away so then the people would get saved. Later when he came back from the dead, he came out speaking. Then he explained what was down there. A true inferno. Then combining with it, then he explained those areas of the future where obviously he himself coming from the Father becoming then the bridge from where Audun Feast then would come. So, the four writings of the Spring Feast as we understand, they are there. However, the positioning of those events, they change a bit. However, the content never under any condition. So then, we can absolutely make sure we understand the simplicity and perfect understanding of the Spring Feast. Then the Messiah went to the Inferno. He was there for 72 hours, came back. Then he began to talk regarding the Inferno and then injected then the future events based from what the prophets had told him to say so. Based from these understandings, then we can filter the entire Spring Feast's writings and place them properly event, properly event, and properly event. The proper events lined up properly. Later they're going to do even more of these, because now we understand we have the Spring Feast, 
that is related with the situation regarding the Messiah himself as the Savior. There were no future talks. It wasn't the time for future talks. People, when they are evil, they are always interested in something else. Always interested, oh, the Messiah is completing the Spring Feast, but we are not interested in the Spring Feast. We want to know the future. The Messiah didn't say a word. He knew those damn scoundrels, how they were. They were very evil. The Messiah said himself, they were evil. The Messiah did not speak of the future. He spoke of the Spring Feast. Then he was in the inferno for 72 hours. Then he came back and the first situation he spoke was a repentance because of the inferno or shield where the souls of the people, they die and they are confined there until the closing of the age. This is what Mishi spoke of. Combining yet with the future of the prophets. Then we understand the post-autumn feast. Then he explained, expounded, then Yerushiahu and Ezekiel and many other sections of the other prophets. So we can write this down and begin to organize the holy instructions as they were, as per Yahanan's organizing of the holy instructions. Step by step, we are going to get there. Please stay tuned, much more coming up.